Good morning, or whatever it is, wherever you are. <clears throat> so, we got our thing multiple, kind of done, and then I remembered that we haven't actually handled the, what, what was the hard part about doing it in JavaScript, which was doing retries. Uh, to simulate that... I think what we do is we init ourselves with off garbage. Oh, you're not just string, you're probably just a secret. Maybe I do have retry. Or it's not enforcing the auth restriction right now. Mm. So not only does it not require a valid auth, it will well, I mean, I might... I was gearing this up for more of a release scenario. Uh, let's get... this to... Hmm. HTTP request. Oh, there's request response. No, we, we just fetched and got it. So yeah, it's actually accepting a completely invalid token. I'm going to play the washing machine a little bit. Hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a little bit of background noise. Let me see if I left the other door open. No, just really loud right now. I usually can't hear it. Uh, when you've got both doors closed. Yeah, so we did not even try to do that. So to get an actual authentication failure, I would have to not also not send the client ID on the first request only. I could just change the client ID. Well, this is easier to notice that it's off. Uh, and I have potential to maybe go back and do it later. Yeah, it's still saying or. I don't even know when the next test window is. Because everything passed the first time. Is that docs or support? Developer forums, it's, it's, I think it's one of the hotter topics right now. Yeah, I'm not sure what this is. Hey, the worst of. How's it going? Oh. Uh, let's see. So, May 1, May 4. Oh, it's actually... T oh. Uh, it's theme starting time, so that's going to be after my normal stream time. Yeah, I'm having to deal with Lambda functions because I need those now. But this is not yet in force, so I have to finagle it to get a, an authorized error. Mm. Well, I'm making things extra hard, hard on myself by trying to do server-side Elm. Uh, but the, some of the callback stuff for the retry got a little hairy on just plain JavaScript, too. Alright, so we can get that. I would have to, but if I, well, I should have it retry once at this point, and then maybe I can arrange to do that differently on the retry. All right, so we get a bad status. Do I not handle? Maybe I don't have specifically handle that. Uh, HTTP response. Right. If it's error, I just do the catch all. So we now have a specific handler. So it's bad status, and specifically, 
unauthenticated and probably for a particular request. Yeah, for... Mm, well, it's really for any request, but only the first time for that given thing. So we have to have some state tracking. that a bugger can do it. Is bad status? Oh, wait. So if there's int and oh, because there's still a body. That's going to be an internal value for this, but. Okay. Did HTTP response not give me a, uh... okay, yes, I have update event, so there is a state. My state needs to get a little more complicated. So for this particular request, have we done an auth retry? Chris Mello, how's it going? Right, I was keeping that around <clears throat> as a JSON value because I was very rarely having to dip into it. That's one of the things I might I need to rethink about. Uh, particularly because You know, as we add fields, it's going to get more and more, more and more gnarly. So user ID. It's our callback. And previously, I've not had to change this mid session after after creation. Uh, we now have I don't know if that's that should that could be should retry, that could be has retried, it could be number of retries. And we've got the things to pull these out. Ah, uh, yeah, well, and I'm partly experimenting with Elm here because I think that uh, the JavaScript was kind of yucky, but I think that this might not actually be much better because you have to do everything through async events.
Okay, so new state. <clears throat> if we get a new event, then it should retry. Which already I'm hitting that parameter. Okay. So like um, breaking them up by value or just I want, you know, so many chunks or chunks of a certain size. Well, you said X number, so that would be a certain number of chunks. I guess I can have an enumerated type that encodes a bool. Okay, so split, test start. So is that a testing method? Uh, okay, test, oh, so, so array dot. Okay, so that is the test string. This is the reduce method. You know, I, I don't use that one very often. Accumulator item index source is the original array. I don't, I, I don't often get enough of those extra parameters. Well, yeah. I guess, yeah, I don't know if script that might be global. Might want to put it a immediately invoked function around it at least. So this is right. So initial array. This is completely assuming it's going to be exactly three. And it cycles back around. So you have a input array of three, you have zero, one, two, three. We have index into that. So I don't know what the application is, or if this is just an exercise. There's a very, it feels like there's a very fragile dependence between the number three and like the input array. I mean, getting these numbers right is just a matter of getting it right. You could generalize it a little bit because this is always just accumulator sub i and maybe you want to do a maybe you want to do a range check on it there's that uh and then it, if it hits max then then reset it because these are all basically the same And what you could do then is you could, instead of saying three, you could say array dot length for, or for your, your accumulator dot length. And that would generalize it to arrays of any length. You'd still be having to assume that it was a, an array of empty lists. Uh, if you generalize it further, you could have a function that would go through and build up such an array and then pass down and do it for X number. Well, here, oh, here's a, hmm. <laughs> also, yeah, so the problem is that this I index, I 
is outside of the function. So if you imagine extending this, it would, you know, to a function you could call multiple times, it could potentially, like you have an odd number of things and the next one picks up the next element, which would be weird. Uh, so you probably just want to do like index modulus length. And actually you wouldn't even have to worry about the, about resetting the counter then, it would just be, just be that. As, you know, as long as you knew your length was three or length of that, of the input list or whatever. Because, you know, assuming you've done all the boundary checks and things and it just turns into, into that, I believe. So you need to make you want to make sure that um, that all the your lengths matched up and everything. All right, so we have should retry. I don't like the, well, when we pull it out as a bool, it'll be okay. I'm, I'm less liking the, the uh, positional parameter here. Which I guess if I did it more as a, like a regular model that we encoded as needed, that'd be less of a problem. That is, if it's enumerated, it's an actual type. Mm. That's roughly the, the true false of it. Uh, and then the decode. That decodes a bool. What is that? Is that like a decode? We decode that and then. With the function and then that. Uh, it's backslash, isn't it? Then, when we're building this up, we can say, we'll retry. Bool retry, bool decoder. Uh, okay, I misinterpreted that. So 
So that's the function itself. And then, okay, so it's getting the bool and it's going to a function and then, but it needs to be to, to a decoder. So we have to do decode.succeed. All right, so this one's getting gnarly. Uh, we can actually do this as decode dot succeed of this statement. Okay, so too much stuff there. Uh, should retry. So equal does not return a boolean. Oh no, we said the type of this was bool. Okay, so we've got that flag there. Uh, now we need a way to update it. If we, uh, let's see, we need to retry this once. We need to do the flags before I actually send any more requests or commands. So if we get this, uh, so modifying this becomes awkward. I could new state with the entire thing. I technically don't have to decode everything. We need to encode a new object based on the old one. which would have to be the code value of field as a value. Looks like in this case is actually what this is. So this is becoming less of a... Oh, and we have to check this status. I might do a full encode decode on it. So if auth failed... Oh, well the state is only in these commands. So I need to do a retry. And right now, I don't think I have a single place that does that because technically we still have to check if we have auth and if we have user ID.
So I might want a function that wraps up some of this stuff. There's a similar thing over here. But since we just got the event, the end of stuff. And so that's decrypted. That's end, that's an auth check. Oh, do I have any way to know? Well, yeah, I kind of know what it was. So I need, almost need like an abstract method of making a request. Because I need to know that it was, they need to know what to retry. Now I had to form a a request over to the other What's your problem now? I must have hit undo somewhere. Uh, you can be an error too. You can both be potential errors. If I did do a full decode and full encode, I could map the result, the field update, map it to a re-encode, and the process might produce an error in the, in the middle of doing that. Kind of means we're going to end up decoding more than we need most of the time. Uh, we could all we could do a state decode up front. Uh, well, technically, we're theoretically allowing the state to vary between events. So, which already means that we don't necessarily need the retry on all things.
Okay, I go down to there. And make a new one using that as the session. Both of those requests get the same thing. Or any of those three requests. Well, no, you don't. So yeah, I'd have to have separate, if it's a, if it is different types, you'd have to have the encoder and decoder for that type. Having good type steering while it's encoded and decoded could be good. And it's specifically the decode step of updating that that causes us trouble, because that's just make a new one and that's fine. That's maintaining the existing state. It's maintaining it. It's getting the session value out. What do we do? So, mm, in implementation, both of these things can fail. means this entire operation can fail. And that's going to be the new state that we pass down to whatever we can abstract to actually make the call. Well, if updating that fails, then we've got an error and we can't proceed. However, this is going to have to go something silly like this. And I can't even like result map that. You know, is there like a result map too? Yeah, there's a map too. It just makes my argument order awkward. However, that makes you a result of decode.error. Oh, are you not comma? I don't want to see lately. Uh, so if we go down here, well, we don't have a, we 
But state two equals retried state. Then I need the way, way to use that to actually make the call. And this could theoretically happen on any call. I could specifically do fetch videos and retry fetch videos. But I'm going to have some other calls that, I, that are retryable. Let's see, fetch token. We've got bigger problems if that doesn't work. Unfortunately, getting the um, breaking the client ID will actually break getting the token. Oh, so if auth is bad, I need to get a token, and then I have to remember what I was doing. So what I actually want to store is what was I doing? And then if we fail with that set, we just have to give up. It also means I have to clear the retry value whenever we succeed. So it is not this. Hmm. A new state wouldn't have a retry set, but I would need to do another encoding of it. If we had a retry state. Or I could set that up as like a maybe type thing. Uh, so I need a way first and foremost to be able to say, we're going to update this to say, we want to retry X and X, op X, and X such and such operation. which might just be the string that we had passed through. So we have two decoders here for the other fields. And that's still something that could fail, which means something is terribly, terribly wrong. Um, could I do a sort of nested state? <clears throat> I might have to do an error response, which means I would have to dig back into that. Although I could pull out just the session 
and the oper get the session, the operation, and the nested state. And then it's like a retry and then and then do. So that would make this into like a retry state. So we don't directly have the user ID. We've got the session. We've got the thing to retry, and we've got the nested state. And the session actually, we presume, can come from the op state. This is where we've got the decoding problem. So the constructor takes session. It does it does just its thing. And I'm probably gonna need this name somewhere else. So we have that, we have its state. State session. And do, can we then do yeah map of success? Uh, but that makes this thing arable. Uh, wait, retry is not itself an operation. Because we're going to do the retry, but it's going to still be issue. Well, it's going to be issuing a fetch token.
I'm wondering if there's some way I can more abstractly define the sort of state machine and have the details and all the decode checks get taken care of better. <clears throat> If I had a state type that just described everything and you went to all the trouble to write the encoder and decoder for every variation of that thing, then you could just have sort of standard Elm type logic so we would want something like hmm. so we've had this very generic just facts but one of the things I need to be able to, rec to represent is that we go from, well, it's not even everything. Because <laughs> we, uh, we have decryption. We have a request come in. So we've got a uh, you know, a videos for user ID. And that may require us to decrypt state. That may require us to fetch token. We then the fetch the videos, assuming all that worked. And if, mm, if we didn't do that, then we fetch videos again. So it's like, if we successfully fetch a token, we queue up fetching the videos. I mean, maybe I need to... Uh, I was doing essentially a string switch here, right? HTTP response. Uh, so that would essentially be, we'd have like retry fetch token and maybe we can extract some logic. Well, uh, why do fetch token succeed but authentication fails? We still have to track that fact all the way through. Which is just kind of a Right, we were wanting to do. The state. So we've got the user ID. Um, these are once the auth is going to be once in the model.
Maybe I could remember it in the master model and sort of like build up. Well, you see, I wanted to say that I could put those things, if they exist, into there, but then you have the state where they don't exist. So it would actually be a bunch of different types. We would have state one is, let's see, so we just got our user ID. We put out a decrypt request. And this is the stuff I remembered. And the annoying thing is like we have this state every single time. And these don't vary during the steering it. Then we have a particular, this particular request. There could be other requests. And now we have to worry about, have we retried? So are those all of the real interesting states? We've got new event. You've got decrypt dead. I mean, it do kind of correspond to events. But we, it's like, what were we doing when we last, what are we, what are we expecting? Then we have fetch token and fetch videos. So a new event gives us the state that we are, either gets us fetching token, fetching videos, or decrypting, authenticating, getting data, or decrypting. Decrypted either gets us fetch token or fetch videos or just respond, we're done. So basically, it's what is pending right now. Which could just be a field in state and you have to update it every time. But I might need to do some higher level decoding there to stay sane. And the problem one is fetch videos. Because really the state we're interested in is have we retried? So maybe the first step is to deal with the full encode, decode, uh, well. The only thing that varies is the retried status. I guess when we add other requests, that's what I was thinking. When we add other requests, we'll want to know which other requests we need to do after fetch token. Which maybe what I need to do there is just have the state have like our original request operation. That would let fetch token work. And then and then do whatever we needed to do. Hmm. 
But if authentication fails twice, you need to not retry. So maybe your stage test always has a flag in it. I was trying to think, oh, my new state doesn't need that flag because we know what it's going to be. And I was thinking, okay, so fetch token gets the state of what it's going to do afterwards. We might still be able to use that. Every time we do a fetch token, we do a particular state that has next operation. So this, the state for fetch token is okay. Uh, here's what you're going to do when, when we're authenticated. If we get successfully authenticate, we send off whatever we'd queued. If we get unauthenticated, we want to go back to that and say here, this is the next operation. But... That next operation, when we get the fail on that operation, that is the thing that has to know whether it's been retried. I also had the interesting thought that I could, like when we get a request in, we have to check decryption, we have to check authentication. I'm wondering if we could queue up operations. And you say, okay, whatever, whatever requests we get, they're gonna go into queue. Uh, as long as we have a queue, we need to see if we need decrypted keys and if we need authentication. And once we do, then we can like just, okay, call that operation function with the, with all the information necessary to do that. And then I'd have one place that says, well, are, do we have this and do we have that? And if we so, we just call this thing. And it's just a function that takes all the things it needs. Uh, so right now, I think my model is a maybe on those. Oh, so end could be undecrypted. So it would have like a context or something that was, we have auth and we have, we definitely have our client ID. And I guess seek, we don't need secret, it's just client ID and auth. We could almost just pre-compute the headers, but I think that, that makes things plain text. Oh, so maybe our queue could remember 
If we go to token again to get authentication, maybe our queue structure remembers that it was, our Elm side queue remembers whether it was a retry. And if we get unauthenticated, no, because fetch token will come back. As long as it succeeds, it will just send whatever. We don't actually know if it succeeds until we get that reply back. I could store a list of pending operations. A dubious operation that would cause it to fail out. Okay, so the the state has to have a retry flag. I think I may have to do full encode decode just so there's one place that deals with all the maybes there. Oh, so, so that was, yeah, so part of it is that that was a value that could be, well, we have to do the encode, decode before we go over report. Perhaps if I have a type for the, I have types for the states, then each operation has the type that it needs. You have to, yeah, you couldn't do a global state decoder unless there was something in the state that said what type of state it was to tell you which kind of decoder to use. So we're back to this as And we have got this type again. Maybe if you record has failed, authentication has failed. Authentication has failed or times failed. And a session is still blah. All right, so that. Uh, we're still gonna need an encoder for this. But maybe I want to make a module for that.
And I deleted all that stuff that dealt with the boolean and whatnot. Then Okay, we've got a source encode. Oh. We don't have a source decode, curiously enough. Right, so this was the encode to output. We probably just passed back the body as a value. Yeah, so what are you? Right, we're probably using Twitch to code for that. But I've got like my port encode decode. But this is like only the state for one thing. So this is like a videos request state. Now you see there are things that are going to be common. Well, there's the state we get back from a initial request, which is only going to have the session. So that's not going to be common. Uh, only the turn, the API requests are going to have retries. So I had an update event thing that just took the opaque state. Uh, if it becomes an enumerated type, then we have to switch over that at every step. And the list of events and the lists and the types of states do not necessarily correspond. Well, if we've got a type tag on the event, I see the event is decrypted. Yeah, you've got a value. You actually don't have a. Wait, decrypted doesn't have. Decrypted event. Where is decrypted event? How do we, where do we pick up user ID from? State user ID of state, where are we getting? Did I put this in, right, it's wrapped in an event state. So that was actually body. So at this level, it's just a value.
So decrypted is still coming back on the, the thing that has this information. So it's kind of cool that we thread all that through, but even though we know it's not uh, going to do multiple requests at once, I'm still... curious what if we kept them around. Now, there's, I guess there's a question of, could we end up keeping things forever? If we ever get a success, we'll send them off. If we ever get a hard fail at the prerequisites, we can just clear the queue. That would mean I wouldn't have to thread state through the decryption or the get token, because those are like application level things. Now combining that means you could potentially get two different tokens, kind of have things stepping on each other, but it'll, you'll end up with a token well, I guess it's possible that re requesting one revokes the previous one. That could be a nasty cycle if they're you know, this out, out asynchronous operation with the wrong token continuously revoking each other. But that could remove the need to deal with any kind of state there. Anytime you went to fetch token or anything else, you would say, okay, here's the thing we really want to actually do. So we have all of our information, we can send that off. If it gets unauthenticated, Hmm. So do we leave it at the head of the queue and say, okay, that was the operation we were doing when we get this response? Or could we send them all off with some sort of state tracker? I kind of like threading the state with each request so that way you could just do we just kind of handle the in-flight stuff? Uh, so really, I guess the pending is when we have like global prerequisites missing. So that potentially reduces the types of states you have to keep track of. then you potentially have like a, a request state for every type of thing we're eventually going to want to do. And they're, they're gonna be pretty similar. Hmm. 
So if the model has Q, all right, we're looking at what would the state of, so this is a state of a video's request. <laughs> what is this? Oh, that's the brand new event. So initially we'll have to encode that, send it off, decode it. So I had an encode for the, um, the, the Lambda replies. This is for like the Lambda requests. The service replies for sort of the internal, this would be like state encode and state decode. Uh, all right, source, no, lambda source, I'll have to fix up get later. Technically, this is sort of like, it's like it's Lambda, but it's like application-specific internal messages. So these are states. Oh, uh, the um, our encode modules, we need that too. So it's like you're going to have your fetch videos encoder. And then a retries have to get shared between code and decode. So pick whoever you want to own that. Lambda state source.
Oh yeah. Uh, I was trying to coordinate with somebody. Okay, right, I got that to save. Oh, and I see this is what I would sometimes. Okay, so yeah, that's that's what we usually do here is we have encode so we can easily import all the encoder decoder stuff and then all of this stuff is actually in so our state.elm with our types And state encode doesn't need to worry about this. And our other encode. The names shouldn't clash. Operation. Yeah, I think that all fell apart. I... We're like rewriting this entire thing. <laughs> That's no longer an E. All right, that's gonna have a whole bunch of name conflicts because it's not actually that right now. <laughs> we uh, to even sort of do this as is. We actually need to write the encoders. Well, 
we've got a little bit of that stuff here. So that's oh um yeah you can actually go into state. And then this. Oh, but these are specific states. So this is going to be, yeah, that's the fetch videos. The fetch videos state. I'm almost wondering if my, my requests should like bundle up the state they have, but then you have to do the specific replies. We're gonna have to deal with how we set the retry on that. State encode. Oh, exposing, yeah, this isn't gonna work here. So that one might actually be pretty simple. Now, maybe I want to actually, with this pulled out, I actually wanna do a retry encoder decoder, because that was actually getting a little, little bit awkward before. I don't know if I need to expose it. Then we don't need you. Okay, it is unhappy elsewhere. Ah, yes. You actually have to store a value and then the coders, decoders need all their stuff. A state type. No, you are this. Code. Uh, it's probably looking for actual code. Uh, fetch videos. Is a import json.decode 
exposing there's a decoder mm. can't use the little sub constructor because we have to get this the third field And retry as a decoder of retry. And what did we do with this? It was a succeed. It was a bool and then uh, then Kind of weird spacing. Uh, where is this? This is handler. We completely subsumed this. Oh, this is this is a kind of state. I mean, it's it's almost a routing. Well, no, you're not quite a state, are you? Maybe we have to have like our requests. We've got, we've got reply. But that's pretty simple right now. Uh, we've got this state alias which is useful in terms of what it is it's just not a not a strict parameter Which, so we've got encode, but that sort of implies that encode should be documenting this as a state. And decode should be documenting this as a state. Well, it's a decoder, so it's not actually a function of that. Oh, there's 
there's the decoder part. Uh, but we have to do decode value all the time. Now this can still fail, so it's still a result. So it's kind of a decoder. It might even be able to type as a decoder, but we're just going to be passing a value to it. And of course, since we've got this in scope. Code string decoder. So what is its particular decode? Right, we did end up using this. And then handler. Right, we were starting to work on this. State user ID. Now, that was doing all the decoding and getting a value for us. I think I want to rewrite how we're even tracking uh, so we would record a fetch video state on the pending requests, which would mean that we would need some sort of enumerated thing for that queue. Uh, is that part of state itself? So it's like these individual calls kind of have a typed thing going on? We really, really, really expect it to be a particular thing. But there are places where we're going to need to deal with, well, this is just the request we've got pending. Uh, I mainly want to separate state for the encoders and decoders, but it doesn't have to go there. We've got messages. These are things that are going to be pending. And this probably is a different namespace, but... So our model
is all the things we're waiting on. Our initial model is an empty array. I guess we're back to we just need this to work, not worrying about the error state. So that's auth. I had to do something to client ID too. So when we get that request, we're going to get that. We're going to get, so this state was the session. Um, if that fetch videos, that will be assumed. I think I want to put that on the queue and then just have a generic thing that executes the queue. So that is a model update for us. Uh, we would actually like to put this on the end so these get executed in order. Which isn't great. And then we're going to want to pull some of this stuff out. In terms of we can decode that and deal with it. So then we take that model, we run it through a function that determines what to do with it. So that is going to be I wonder if that, is that just a step in update? We update event and then, uh, update event would not, this might not need to directly send commands if I did that up there. So all of its commands could go through pending event queue. What is this then? Um, this takes a model.
Now you see, this was a little bit specific. But how did you get the user ID to make the request then? I pulled this up. So I over extracted here. So that, that must have been like down here. So this is going to be something like this. You still have to be up here. And this was just the command. So this is, is a command right now. And we still have to deal with what we do with this. And this will eventually have to deal with other kinds of requests too. So do we have environment? If we've got plain environment, if not, we need to decrypt. Uh, these things were passing state. Uh, oh. Well, that operation specifically takes a state. Fetch token doesn't need that anymore, but it is gonna be a, just, a, just a request. So now you're going to have to have probably what was our original session here. So that we can send error responses. This is... We're doing commands right now. Decrypt. I mean, this is pretty much a fatal error if it fails, or it's not. I don't have any state to track here. All right, because I was passing it down to those things. But this is going to go back to our queue again, so that'll that'll kind of take care of that. Uh, that will be downstream of there. So you may not even need that. So then this would be like, we need to execute requester something.
you're going to need something. Uh, we have to modify the model. I could actually decode this in place. But there's pulling it out, and then there's there's we have a match, and or there's at least one entry. And there's not one entry. Actually, this should be exhaustive. Then we're done. So there's execute the next request, and then there's execute the request, which is pretty much just the command. Oh, I might actually have to execute all of these once I get set up. So you're blah, 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 blah. you are just well, there's only one case here. And I guess since this thing knows what its state should be. It can do with the, it can deal with the encoding. Now, I suppose we could get into a bit of a loop here if we try to step this and we're not making progress. It's a little bit why I was concerned with uh, the whole retry flag in the first place. Because the old version would definitely ground out if something didn't make progress. This not necessarily ground out. <laughs> uh, you are only going to be a command, though.
new event. And model command none. We wanted to set this up so that we update the model. Maybe, maybe if we do better control of when we step. And keep it from going crazy. Forgetting the name of the field. Oh yeah, you got problems. <laughs> well, you need to update env and then fetch token or send the request. That would be user ID missing from the state. So now I don't need the end twice. <laughs> uh, HTTP response. So now we know what it was a response to, so we would do the decode on the state. Oh, this is fetch token. This is update auth. That was making the direct thing. Uh, this, is, this should be dequeuing and getting the state information from there. First we decrypt, we get the request, we cycle to do the decrypt call. We get that, we cycle to do the fetch token. We get the token, we cycle to DQ our first thing. All right. Fetch videos constructor. All right. So fetch token does not, it needs the session state for this request. So that's something we might need all through this. Okay, given just the value, given it in a state where we can... Okay, we're not calling this anymore. We call this from here. Okay, so there... We don't currently have a path that allows us to call error. Really? Because from fetch videos, well, I mean, that's good because that it took out a whole lot of cases where it's like, well, something, something was very, very wrong. So that means fetch token doesn't need to pass that around because we captured it up here.
uh, possibly we could have been doing, we need to do some of, the, some of that with, 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 with some of this stuff. I don't have to care about what kind of what kind of state it is. So fetch token doesn't need that. So the fetch token function shouldn't need it. Uh, is the problem here? Is that we need a value? Actually, is there? Okay. Uh, fetch videos model dot end. Okay, so this had right. So this is state dot user ID because this is a definite structure now. And auth. The time we get here, we queued this thing, this data, because we wanted to make sure that auth was available. That was one of many checks we did, but we're no longer in the direct syntax tree of that. So we don't have access to the decoded variable, so we have to decode it again, even though we know it can't fail. Or the way we deal with this would be to pass auth down through all of these things. Because we're eventually going to have to make requests that involve it. I mean, in theory, our env is known too, but that was the easiest way to pass it around. So the crazy thing is that the auth is in the model. <laughs> it's just we're now on a path where we know it exists. What was it? Uh, in model terms, it was a secret. Well, it was a maybe secret, but now it's a definite secret. the end so you kind of have to take over all the things that these calls might need so maybe my pending request should that be something else uh, you don't really want the enumeration to be more well no because this, this is all the stuff we didn't know when we queued it up Uh, now, where do we use env? OAuth headers. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, this is just something has gone terribly wrong. We exposed plain env, which unfortunately is a type alias that is hard com that is typewise compatible with encrypted env. And we can still use the alias and document what we expect it to be. We're just not going to have any enforcement on that. So if you take a plain env, then I can skip all of this. This actually kind of skips you down to just client ID. which is what this function actually needs. Uh, it's not just what token needs. It's fetch token needs more, but that's not in the same system. We do know it's an end plane, though. Token path. Yeah, so here's that problem again. So I guess that makes it a little easier to pass around. And then execute request is where we may be, oh, this, this has to be execute next request, first of all. But this, and we would think all things like it. Although I guess you could do something like decrypt the keys and queue up a fetch token. But fact-based seems maybe a little bit more stable there. So what execute request is just a stand-in for any of these many functions that are all going to need like the headers essentially. So your auth, your env, you need the uh, you need the whole env. Well, it would be env.clientid. Which would be another secret, which we have no order order on. OAuth headers can be a proper client ID. Uh, 
That makes the execute request signature. So we've got this client ID off. It shows up a bunch. So it's like I would, it's like you pass that around a lot, but you don't necessarily want to convert it to headers because once it's in headers, it's in plain string. It's positional arguments now. So I guess making it positional wouldn't be that much worse. Of course, there, this leaves no documentation about which is which. Uh, Or is that has it as ever well? You have to construct it for a function. When you look at the documentation for that function, it wouldn't tell you how to construct it. We can do a structure similar to env that will document it. It'd just be kind of a well, no, because we'll still get a positional constructor, which you could still mess up. A named record. No. Type alias uh, I guess maybe maybe here we could start calling it token. Oh, uh, wait, Twitch header, Twitch, uh, okay, so Twitch header, I have, I have, yeah, that's, that's plain text, that's not going to be bad. Token path is something different. Fetch videos. Back down to there. Uh, this is where we have to construct it. Having proven these two things. And then this is where we do all the pass through stuff. Now this is a specific state. Uh, yeah, we were gonna push the encoding down to you. So now you is gonna be a specific state, so that should match. 
So this is going to be a fetch video state. Okay. Uh, I want to remember to watch the door around me. That'll work. That's actually getting kind of close. Uh, and fetch token. We just put in an all. We didn't see a place that we would be able to use that, except for the errors that we'll have to deal with later. So, uh, that is a generic thing. But the, it's only interested in one field out of there. It is still a value, unfortunately. And this was for decoding, which decoding is going to happen elsewhere. Which means this has to do the decoding. Uh, and this thing can fail. I might, I might want to do something with this. It's, it's actually a fair bit of stuff there. Uh, if that fails, What do we do? So we don't have a session because we had pushed the, the failure. I guess I could still have the result check in there. It just went to the coding itself. That seems a little bit of a weird place to push that. Uh, yeah, it's exposed from there, but I can I can probably do with qualifying that. Uh, okay, so now we've got some Lambda interface issues, because this doesn't have a state anymore. Uh, 
has, again, it has one argument. The definition says it has two arguments. Ah. So I got another send response. That was the one I missed. I was looking at send error. Fetch videos. Oh, I never, never did the. I, I pulled pulled it back to get the uh, switch case. Right, so we're gonna have so to get the session. We're gonna have to decode. I guess I only have to assert that it's a result of something that has a session in it. Uh, you need to be state. Send response. So that's saying, oh, right. This is all you need. This is probably what I was passing around as a JSON value before. Okay. So that works somehow. This stuff is a little bit cleaner. This is almost unnecessary. This is indeed a decoding step. So we need something there. So now we don't have we don't have two things here. So that uses the queue internally. We still don't actually have a way to handle authentication errors. And it looks like I'm, well, I guess if I leave this up for the test window, there's going to be one today. It's going to be like four hours or something. I could test the reauthentication behavior. This is kind of experimental. Did it figure, you figure out renamed. So until, I, until I actually handle replot or retries, and not yet sure it's better.
So if we get an unauthenticated <clears throat> if it's from fetch token we well I guess the Twitch API could be down but it shouldn't be unauthenticated if it's from fetch token we might as well debug to do because we can't proceed. If it's from fetch videos, we want to go back to fetch token. But that's where we need to deal with the retry flag. And what I did, what I just did was I removed the session from fetch token because we weren't using it. Yeah, so, so I don't necessarily, well, I could go through all of pending requests and send them an error response. Because that is a global failure. I'm probably going to have to iterate over all of We still don't have this. Um, So I can't actually do that, yes, yet. No, I can go through all of the other requests and have them send a response to their session. Do I need a function that can pull a session out of anything? Or do I need to pull the common fields of a request up? So that a fetch videos request is just that user variable, user ID. And then every end user request has a has retried and session flag. Then that's in a structure you can go through every request and bloop, bloop it off. Uh, it still has to get encoded into the state, but you could. You would decode that up front. If the top level thing was enumerated, because you'd still have to handle a case that the, uh, that the other fields didn't decode. Uh, fetch token right now has no state. If you wanted all 
HTTP requests to have session and retry information, which retry isn't going to be valid for like fetch token. Well, I need to get lunch. I've got a I've got a visitor coming. Um, I need to get groceries at some point. Might be interesting to work on it during the outage window. When is the next one? Six. So that'd be Wednesday. And then next Monday? Hmm. <laughs> and then it'll just be out. Then we'll just be out. I'll always be able to test the no token behavior. Anyway, I need to get going. Thanks to the subscribers. Thanks to all the people who hosted me. So there is an outage window today. Maybe I want to work on it later. I just have to sort that out with the groceries and everything else, else out. Well, it's my general off day, but that's what I'm usually on. Uh, no more Step Mania, doesn't, doesn't seem very popular. And goodbye.